my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, feel free to stick around, click around, see if there's anything that takes your fancy. I put out new videos every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday, so I am here all of the time and I would love it if you would subscribe. So today's video is going to be the first in a two part of my summer anticipated releases. There are so many books coming out this summer, um, so I've split it into two. This will be literary fiction, general fiction, that sort of thing, and then the next one, which I think will be coming out on Sunday, is going to be all of my historical fiction releases that I am excited for. Um, although it is summer, <laughs> it is the middle of June, there is torrential downpour here today and it's very dark. So although this is my summer releases video, I am feeling anything but summery. But I have 25 books to talk to you about, so let's get started. I'm going to talk to you about their release dates, but these are all UK release dates. So if you want to check out when they're coming out internationally, I will have left all the books that I'm talking about in the description, as well as links to where you can pre-order them from bookshop.org. Um, so the first one that I want to talk to you about is coming out on the 24th of June, so very, very soon. And that is The Hummingbird by Sandro Veronesi. Now I think that Matthew Sharapa has talked about this book um, and it does sound really, really interesting. It has got praise from Ian McEwan and John Pelahari and Roddy Doyle. So um, it is a very highly hyped book. Marco Carrera is the hummingbird, a man with the almost supernatural ability to stay still as the world around him continues to change. As he navigates the changes of life, confronting the death of his sister and the absence of his brother, taking care of his parents as they approach the end of their lives, raising his granddaughter, coming to terms with his love for the enigmatic Luisa, Marco Carrera comes to represent the quiet heroism that pervades so much of our everyday experience. A thrilling novel about the need to look to the future with hope and live with intensity to the very end. And this was translated from the Italian by Elena Palla. The next book is coming out on the 29th of June and this is a piece of African fiction that is by Kenyan writer Makoma Wa Ngugi, whose father was Ngugi Wa Thiongo, who is a classic of Kenyan literature and wrote uh, The Perfect Nine, which came out last year. This is On Bury Our Dead With Song, which moves between Kenya and Ethiopia. In the heart of Nairobi, four musicians, the diva, the Taliban man, the corporal and the 70-year-old 70 70 bartender Miriam gather for a once-in-a-lifetime competition to see who comes and perform the best Tizita. In the audience is John Thandi Manfredi, who is enthralled by their renditions of the Ethiopian blues. Desperate to learn more, he follows the musicians back to Ethiopia, hoping to uncover the secret to this haunting music. Manfredi's search takes him back from the idyllic Ethiopian countryside to the vibrant juke junks and raucous parties of Addis Ababa. Um, I love books that include music in this way um, and I have been really enjoying lots of different African books this year. I'll leave a link um, up there to one of my vlogs um, so I'm very excited to read that. Next one that I believe that Grace from GK Reads has talked about and that is The Five Wounds by Kristen Valdez Quande which comes out on the 1st of July. And this is set over Holy Week in the small town of Las Penas, New Mexico and 33 year old unemployed Armando Padilla has been given the part of Jesus in the Good Friday procession. He is preparing feverishly for his role when his 15 year old daughter Angel shows up pregnant on his doorstep and disrupts his plans for personal redemption. The five Wounds spans the baby's first year as five generations of the Padilla family converge. The expectations that a map Amadeo, who often solves the problems with a beer in his hand, doesn't think he can live up to. This one has loads of high praise as well, um, and I love generational book. And this is a Latino American experience. Out on the 6th of July is a piece of Argentine fiction called The Woman from Uruguay by Pedro Mayral, which was translated from the Spanish by Jennifer Croft. Lucas Perea, an unemployed writer in his 40s, embarks on his, a day trip from Buenos Aires to Montevideo to pick up $15,000 in cash, an advance due to him on his upcoming novel. The small fortune might mean the solution to his problems, most importantly the tension he has with his wife. While she spends her days at work, he is fantasising about the one thing that keeps him going, the woman from Uruguay whom he met at a conference and has been longing to see ever since. But that woman is a free spirit with her own relationship troubles, and the day they spend together in this beautiful city on the beach winds up being nothing like Lucas predicted. Pedro Miral won the book at International previously, um, and so I'm excited to read that. I'm definitely trying to read more works from Latin America this year. Also out on the 6th of July is a collection of stories called Dear Miss Metropolitan by Carolyn Farrell. Fern seeks refuge from her mother's pill popping and boyfriends via Soul Train. Gwyn finds salvation in the music of Prince, much to her congregation's dismay. And Jessania, miles ahead of her classmates at her gifted and talented high school, is a brainy and precocious enigma. 
None of this matters to Boss Man, the monster who abducts them and holds them captive in a dilapidated house in Queen. On the night they are finally le rescued, throngs line the block, gawking and claiming ignorance. Among them is lifetime resident Miss Metropolitan, advice columnist for the local weekly. But how could anyone who fancies herself a newspaper woman have missed the horror unfolding right across the street? So this says it's a collection of stories, although that description does sound quite like a novel, which I think is quite intriguing. I suppose there will be interconnected short stories. Um, and like I mentioned before, I love books that include music, which it sounds like this will include a lot of. Um, it also sounds like it will be pretty dark, but um, I am trying to read more short stories and this one definitely stuck out to me. Out on the 8th of July is The Listeners by Jordan Tanner Hill. This is a piece of spe speculative fiction, which sounds really, really intriguing. While lying in bed next to her husband one night, Claire Devon hears a low hum that he cannot, and it seems no one else can either. This innocuous noise begins causing Claire headaches, nosebleeds, insomnia, gradually upsetting the balance of her life. When she discovers that a student of hers can also hear the hum, the two strike up an unlikely and intimate friendship. Finding themselves increasingly isolated from their families and colleagues, they fall in with a disparate group of neighbours who also perceive the sound. What starts as a neighbourhood self-help group group gradually transforms into something far more extreme and with far-reaching consequences. This has been praised by Emma Donoghue among a lot of other people. It sounds so weird and if it can be pulled off I think it will be absolutely brilliant. Also out on the 8th of July is Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cooper Smith. This is a piece of fiction that blends folklore from Vietnam as well as influences from Vietnam's history. Two young women go missing decades apart. Both are fearless, both are lost and both will have their revenge. 1986, the teenage daughter of a wealthy Vietnamese family loses her way in an abandoned rubber plantation while fleeing her angry father and is forever changed. 2011, a young, unhappy Vietnamese-American woman disappears from her new home in Saigon without a trace. The fates of these two women are inescapably linked, bound together by past generations, by ghosts and ancestors, by the history of possessed bodies and possessed lands. Alongside them, we meet a young boy who is sent for boarding school for the Metis children of French expatriates just before Vietnam declares its independence. This is a time-travelling, heart-pounding, border-crossing, fever dream of a novel that will haunt you. So this sounds really, really brilliant. I love books that um, weave in history and folklore to a book set in modern times. Um, I'm trying, I really uh, want to read more from Vietnam as well um, and I just think that this sounds so magical and I also really love the cover. Another one that, whose cover I love and is coming out on the 8th of July is The Giant Dark by Sarvat Hassin. This is another book that also weaves in music, so there's definitely some themes going on. Ada is the defining rock star of her age, her every move observed, examined and owned by a devoted cultish fanbase. When she disappears without a trace into the complicated love affair, they are determined to find her, uncover her truths and own her once more. Ada and Essan reconnect after a decade apart, hoping to recapture the innocent, lost love of their youth. Before long, their connection is strained by secrets and jealousies, and the past begins to blur with their present as they follow in the footsteps of mythic lovers before them, inspired by the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. If you don't know, I have a classics degree, so anything inspired by Greek myths is always of interest to me, um, and this one just sounds brilliant, really interesting way to modernise it, um, because Orpheus obviously was a musician, but in this case it's Ada or Aida, and that cover and everything is just so intriguing to me. Next by Elizabeth Wong, We Could Not See the Stars, um, which is also coming out on the 8th of July. Han's uneventful life in his sleepy fishing village is disturbed when a strange man arrives, asking questions about Han's mother. Han doesn't trust Mr Ng, but his cousin Chong Meng is impressed with the stories of his travels and tales of a golden tower. Together they steal the only thing Han has left to remember his mother by before disappearing. On a faraway island, across the Great Peninsula and across the seas, the forest of Suryang is cursed. Wander in and you will return without your memories. Professor To has been searching the forest of Suryang for years. He believes the forest hides something that does not wish to be discovered. An ancient civilization, a mysterious golden tower. So this is another book that weaves in elements of magic and mystery. It sounds a bit threatening and dark, which is something that I definitely enjoy in books. Released on the 22nd of July is Night Bitch by Rachel Yoda. This is a, another book with a bit of magical realism about a mother who thinks that she's turning into a dog. An ambitious mother puts her art career on hold to stay at home with her newborn son, but the experience does not match her imagination. Two years later, she steps into the bathroom for a break from her toddler's demands, only to discover a dense patch of hair on the back of her neck. In the mirror, her canine suddenly looks sharper than she remembers. Her husband, who travels for work five days a week, casually dismisses her fears from far away hotel rooms. The mother's symptoms intensify and her temptation to give in to her new dog impulses peak. She struggles to keep her alter canine identity a secret. 
So um, stories about motherhood, again, are something that I'm really intrigued by. And I love the magical realist spin on this tale. And this one has been praised by Carmen Maria Machado. So I'm hoping for some beautiful writing as well. Also released on the 22nd of July is Almarina by Valeria Perella. Nisida, moored like a boat in the Mediterranean, is a small island nestled between Capri and Bagnoli off the coast of Naples. Each year, through the early morning light, Elisabetta Maurano travels across the city, pass passes by the guards on the way to the detention centre, hands over her bag and arrives at her classroom. All thoughts are suspended once inside. Usually, Elisabetta hasn't spoken to anyone since the day before, her only reason for living to teach mathematics to the group of young inmates who arrived not long after she does. But one day, Almarina shows up and everything changes. She is Romanian and bears the signs of a personal history on her body. Together, closed up in a small classroom, a true island within a an island, Elisabetta and Almarina discover a possible pathway to freedom. Uh, books about incarceration are again something that I am interested in um, and also this it sounds like it's going to be a queer love story. Out on the 29th of July is The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fanonet Jeffers. This is written by a 2020 National Book Award nominated poet has been praised by Jacqueline Woodson. Since girlhood, Ailey Pearl Garfield has understood Du Bois' words on double consciousness all too well, bearing the names of her two formidable black Americans, the revered choreographer Alvin Ailey and her great-grandmother Pearl, the descendant of enslaved Georgians and tenant farmers. Ailey is reared in the north of the city, but spends summers in the small Georgia town of Chickasetta, where her mother's family has lived since their ancestors arrived from Africa in bondage. From an early age, Ailey fights a battle for belonging that's made all the more difficult by a hovering trauma, as well as by the whispers of women, her mother, Belle, her sister, Lydia, and a maternal line reaching back two centuries that urge Ailey to succeed. To come to terms with her own identity, Ailey embarks on a journey through her family's past, uncovering the shocking tales of her generations of ancestors, indigenous, black and white, in the deep south. So this one has been really, really highly praised, and again, sounds like there's something a little magical in this, and also an exploration of history. Um, all things that I really, really love in books. Next one, um, by David Hoon Kim, which comes out on the 3rd of August 2021, and this is Paris is a Party, Paris is a Ghost. And this one caught my eye because it's been praised by Namwali Sopal, who wrote The Old Drift, which is one of the best books that I've read so far this year. When Fumiko emerges after one month locked in her dorm room, she's already dead, leaving a half-smoked Marlboro light and a cupboard of petrified food in her wake. For her boyfriend Heinrich Blattend, an aspiring translator, these remnants are like clues, propelling him forward in a search for meaning. Meanwhile, for Miko, or perhaps her doppelganger, reappears in line at the Louvre on street corners and subway platforms and on the dissection table of a group of medical students. So this is a book about translation, which is also a subject that I'm really interested in. There have been quite a few books out about translation recently, and this one sounds really, really intriguing. Um, it also sounds quite dark. It sounds like there's not going to be much of a plot. It's definitely going to be a thoughts and ideas based novel which are my favourite. Next released on the 3rd of August is Savage Tongues by Azarine Van de Villet Olumi. It's summer when Arizu, an Iranian American teenager, goes to Spain to meet her estranged father at an apartment he owns there. He never shows up, instead sending her a weekly allowance, care of his step nephew Omar, a 40 year old Lebanese man. As the weeks progress, Arezu is drawn into a mercurial, charged and ultimately catastrophic affair with Omar, a relationship that shatters her just at the cusp of adulthood. Two decades later, Arezu inherits the apartment. She returns with her best friend Ellie, an Israeli-American scholar devoted to the Palestinian cause, to excavate the place and finally put words to a trauma she's long held in silence. So this is a book about ghosts, a book about what haunts us, a book about trauma, all things that I really enjoy reading. Or not enjoy but all things I'm really interested in reading. Also published on the 5th of August is Red Crosses by Sasha Filipenko which was translated by Ryan James Bear and Ella Vayner. One struggles not to forget while the other would like nothing better. Tatiana Alexeyevna is an old woman over 90 rich in lived experience and suffering from Alzheimer's. Every day she loses a few more of her irreplaceable memories. Alexandra is a young man whose life has been brutally torn in two. Tatiana tells her young neighbour her life story, a story that encompasses the entire Russian 20th century with all of its horrors and hard-worn humanity. So as you can see, again, there is a theme. I like books that explore history, um, explore a person's history and where things are slowly revealed through the telling of stories. Um, and Russian history in particular is one that I'm interested in. And also intergenerational friendships like those are things I love in books as well. 
The next one praised by everyone from Kaise Lehman to Abby DeRay, and that is Hell of a Book by Jason Mott. A black author sets out on a cross-country publicity tour to promote his best-selling novel. The, that storyline drives Hell of a Book and is the scaffolding of something much larger and urgent, since Mott's novel also tells the story of Soot, a young black boy living in a rural town in the recent past, and the kid, a possibly imaginary child who appears to the author on his tour. As these characters' stories build and build and converge, they astonish. For while this heartbreaking and magical book entertains and is at once about family, love of parents and children, art and money, it's also about a nation's reckoning with the tragic police shooting playing over and over again on the U news and what it can mean to be a black American. So this one sounds like it's going to be a bit surreal and experimental in form. And I really enjoy books that are experimental in form, but I've been struggling to find them because books that are described as kind of experimental don't always come across that way. But the amount of praise this has got and the um, way people have been praising it has convinced me that this is going to be one of them. I particularly like it when that surreality and that play with form is exploring important political ideas as this one is. Next, released on the 10th of August, is The Shimmering State by Meredith Westgate. And again, this one has a lot of praise, including from people like Francis Cha. Lucien moves to Los Angeles to be with his grandmother as she undergoes an experimental memory treatment for Alzheimer's using a new drug, Memorexin. An emerging photographer, he's also running from the sudden death of his mother, a well-known artist whose leg legacy haunts him even from New York. Sophie has just landed the lead in the upcoming performance of La Sylphide with the Los Angeles Ballet. She's a waitress during her off hours at the Chateau Marmont, witnessing the recreational use of Memorexin, or MEM, among the Hollywood elite. When Lucian and Sophie meet at the centre, founded by the ambitious yet conflicted Dr Angelica Sloan to treat patients who've abused MEM, they have no memory of how they got there, or why they feel so inexplicably to drawn to one another. Is it attraction, or something they cannot remember from the before? Um, so I don't normally read a lot of speculative fiction, but I was really captured by the idea of this book. It kind of reminded me of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is a film that I um, really, really loved when I was a teen. Um, so I'm hoping that it will be kind of similar to that. I think that it's been, Francis Char described it as cinematic, dreamlike, at times brutal, yet poignant. Um, and cinematic is definitely what it sounds like to me. Next, a book called Four Minutes by Natalia de Leva, which is out on the 19th of August. It centres around Leah, an orphan who suffered daily horrors growing up, but now struggles to integrate into society as a gay woman. She confronts her trauma by trying to volunteer at an orphanage and to adopt a young girl, a choice that is frustrated over and over, over by bureaucracy and the pervasive stigma against gay women in modern-day Bulgaria. In addition to Leah's narrative, the no novel contains nine other standalone character studies of other frequently ignored voices. A meticulously crafted social novel, novel taking a difficult, uncompromising look at modern life in Eastern Europe. This is another piece of translated fiction, translated by Isadora Angel, um, which I am trying to read more. Um, translated fiction, and there is just so much out there that I find really intriguing. This is another one that seems very, very experimental and is covering voices from the edge of modern society in Bulgaria. Coming out on the 26th of August is The Human Zoo by Sabina Murray. Filipino-American Christina Ting Klein has just travelled from New York to Manila, both to escape her imminent divorce and to begin research for a biography of Timmy Chek, an indigenous Filipino brought to America at the start of the 20th century to be exhibited as part of a human zoo. It has been a year since Ting's last visit, and one year since Procopio Copo Gumbok swept the elections in an upset and took power as president. Arriving unannounced at her ageing aunt's or aristocratic home, Ting quickly falls into upper-class Manila life, family gatherings at her cousin's compound, spending time with her best friend In Chue, a gay socialist professor in philosophy, and a flirtation with her ex-boyfriend Chet. Ting witnesses modern Filipino society languishing under Gumbok's terrifying reign. To make her way, she must balance the aristocratic traditions of her extended family, as well as temper her stance towards the regime her loved ones are struggling to live with. So I'm assuming that Coppo um, is a allegory for um for Duterte I always enjoy books that are out kind of outsiders exploring a culture next coming out on the 2nd of September is the Dragonfly Sea by Yvonne Adehiambo War and this is another piece of Kenyan fiction on the island of Pate off the coast of Kenya lives a solitary stubborn Ayan and her mother Munira when a sailor named Mohidin, also an outsider enters their lives Ayana found something she has never had before a father but as Ayana grows into adulthood, forces of nature and history begin to reshape her life and the island itself, 
from a taciturn visitor with a murky past to a sanctuary seeking religious extremist. Ayana ends up embarking on a dramatic ship's journey to the far east where she will discover friends and enemies, be seduced by the charming but unreliable scion of a perf powerful Turkish business family, reclaim her devotion to the sea and come to find her own tenuous place amid a landscape of beauty and violence and surprising joy. I love books set on sea, uh, at sea, on islands, on ships, anything like that really really draws me into a book and as I mentioned before I've been really enjoying lots of different fiction from Africa so I am intrigued to read more Kenyan writers. Next is another book translated from Spanish and that is Martita I Remember You by Ch Sandra Ciceronos which was translated, was translated by Liliana Valenzuela. As a young woman Corina leaves her Mexican family in Chicago to pursue her dream of becoming a writer in cafes in Paris. Instead, she spends her brief time in the City of Lights, running out of money and lining up with other immigrants to call home from a broken payphone. But her months of befriending panhandling artists in the subway, sleeping on crowded attic floors and dancing the tango at underground parties are given a lasting glow by the intense friendship with Martita and Paola. Over the years, the three women disperse to three continents, falling out of touch and out of mind, until a letter unearthed in the closet brings Cor Corina's days in Paris back breathtaking immediacy. Books about friendship and books set in Paris are the reasons that I am drawn to this as well as it being translated fiction. I think it sounds utterly charming and lovely um, as well as having a bit of mystery to it. Next a piece of Cuban fiction and that is I Was Never the First Lady by Wendy Guerra. Nadia's Guerra's mother, Albis Torres, left when Nadia was just 10 years old. Growing up the proponents of revolution had promised a better future. Now that she's an adult, Nadia finds that her life in Havana hasn't quite matched its promise. Instead, it has stifled her rebellious and artistic desires. Frustrated, Nadia finds hope and a way out when she wins a scholarship to study in Russia. Leaving Cuba offers her chance to find her long-lost mother and her real father. But as she embarks on her journey east, Nadia soon begins to question everything she thought she knew and understood about her past. So again, we are travelling, we are uncovering mysteries. It is set in Cuba and Russia, um, very interesting cultures to me. Uh, so yeah, I think that sounds really, really intriguing. Coming out on the 14th of September is Season of Anomi by Wole Soyinka, who was the first black winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. In an unnamed country in Africa, Ofei writes propaganda jingles for the National Coca Corporation. As part of his job, he is sent to Aieru, a small coastal village whose geographic landscape has largely kept the village insulated from the government and its corruption. Ofehi witnesses the traditional way of life and values that run counter to the country. This creates an inner shift. In a challenge against the government, Ofehi soon finds that a revolution may be too difficult to control. Soyin Ka infuses mythology and his signature poetic style to create a dazzling novel while it is political and revolutionary. Which, political, revolutionary, poetic, l literary, mythological, all of those things <laughs> are like buzzwords for me. Um, and as I mentioned, I've been loving some African fiction lately, so very excited by this novel from a Nigerian stalwart of the literary scene. Next, another one with a beautiful cover, and this is What Storm, What Thunder by Miriam J.A. Chansey, which comes out on the 14th of September. The story of the earthquake that devastated Haiti in 2010, told through 10 voices. Chansey's intimate prose draws the reader into the hopes, dreams and regrets of a cast of characters in Port-au-Prince. It's a wealthy expat with a secret daughter, an architect who drafts affordable housing for an NGO, a small-time drug trafficker who pines for a beautiful cool girl, a sex worker and her business partner who are followed by a man they believe is the voodoo spirit of death. A novel about hope, courage and the importance of community and a moving study of a city brought to its knees by a natural disaster. I love books that are told from multiple perspectives. Um, and this just sounds so brilliant and beautiful. And then finally, released on the 23rd of September, is A Single Rose by Muriel, by Muriel Barbary. Her first novel, uh, The Elegance of the Hedgehog, is one that I know Lena Norms has raved about, which is one of the things that caught my eye about this one. Rose has just turned 40 when she gets a call from a lawyer asking her to come to Kyoto for the reading of her estranged father's will. So for the first time in her life, she finds herself in Japan, where Paul, her father's assistant, is waiting to greet her. As Paul guides Rose along the mysterious itinerary designed by her deceased father, her bitterness and anger are soothed by the stones and the trees in the Zen gardens they move through. During their walks, Rose encounters acquaintances of her father, including a potter and poet, an old lady friend, his housekeeper and chauffeur, whose interactions help her to slowly begin to accept a part of herself she has that she has never before acknowledged. Missing parents seems to be another theme that I have um, uncovered in all of these books that I am intrigued by. Um, I love 
family mysteries and I think that that's why those things speak to me um, and also set in Japan so I think it's going to be wonderfully beautiful um, especially since I know how many people do love The Elegance of the Hedgehog. Those are 25 books that I am excited for that are coming out at the end of June, July, August and the beginning of September this year. If there are any there you are particularly excited for please do let me know in the comments and remember to subscribe because my um, video about 25 historical fiction books coming out this year will be coming out on Sunday I think. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you did like it and if you did I will leave my playlist of all my anticipated releases right here for you to click on and I will leave a button here for you to subscribe if you aren't already. I put out new videos three times a week as I said so I'll see you again very very soon. Bye bye!